Okay, part three. Let's finish up this painting. Let's have a great time of it. We are uh, pretty much, you know, rounding third base here, uh, kind of really, you know, uh, just have, we just have to do actually the top portion of the painting, so uh, where the, uh, where the uh, green uh, hills are, and some rocks, and some shoreline, so <clears throat> uh, once we're at this point, we're really in a solid place, because this is all, you know, the majority of the focal point of the painting is the boats in the water, and the, uh, you know, this top section here is, you know, interesting and some different variations in color uh, as compared to over here where we have more reds and blues. Here we've got some greens and earth tones, some browns and golds. Um, and uh, so let's get right into it here. We're going to finish up the details of this painting too as well. We're going to just try to capture maybe a few more subtle uh, tonal values in the, in the painting. So. When we paint Alla Prima, usually it's a very um, fun way to paint as well as a great way to kind of uh, sneak up on a painting, so to speak. So when we're painting, if, we, if we're if we working from an approach of doing the darks first, the more of the um, uh, darker tonal values in the painting first, um, those are pretty easy to see when you're when you're looking at photographs or outdoors. The, the darks kind of like they stand out the most, and then the subtle tonal values those are harder to really see sometimes. And uh, I do it myself a lot of times. I, I work on a painting, and I I've sometimes don't always catch those nice little variations in the middle tones and, and lighter tones, which can really add a ton of interest into the painting. So let's try to do that here and um, see if we can kind of watch the transition that we that we go through here as we finish up the painting and then we start adding in just a few more lighter tone tonal values in the boat both boats and then we'll get the hills in so maybe let's let's get the uh variation of tonal values in i have some uh, fresh water some fresh clean water that's important especially because we're going to be going into some white paper here so we want to make sure we uh, um, we use fr fresh clean water. This way, our washes will be uh, you know more uh, transparent and the correct uh, color we want to have here. So let's do some cerulean blue and some yellow ochre. Some raw umber. And here I'll put a little bit of uh, mineral violet. cobalt blue maybe I'll Use just a touch of uh, cadmium lemon yellow. Then we'll use some more of the uh, And that's where we can get those nice, interesting, lighter tonal values. And I'm working 
from my painting, my original painting. I'm looking at that and trying to... So I'm going to use some cobalt blue and burnt sienna here. I think here I want to try to go for some uh, Viridian, Sap Green, Viridian. Maybe some French Ultramarine Blue. Some Cerulean Blue. And I'm kind of experimenting here. I wanted to maybe get a more interesting uh, an interesting look at the base of the boat. And in the original uh, painting, we did have that dark, darker line across the, the base of the boat. So I tried to go back in and get that a little bit. And I can also dry off my brush on a uh, piece of uh, tissue. And then get a little reflection in this here. So I don't want to go too much more. I'd rather just uh, kind of let that be there. That's fine. Sometimes going too much with details can can cause an issue. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I think let's go with a dark stripe on the top of the boat. I did see that in the uh, when I was painting the original painting. So I'm going to go with burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and I'll we'll try to get a nice uh, line there. Here I would dry off my brush a little bit just to maybe just to get some of the lines to break up the line a little bit Alright, that's uh, looking fine. Let's get a little more uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and French ultramarine blue. We'll do the um, exhaust. That's one detail here. You just want to do that real fast. Um, And I want 
try to um, get some more detail. So this is uh, the reflection here. I want that boat to really now that's much better we can see that the boat looks much better like sitting flat like it was looking like it was sitting too high up on the water and that was because I added that reflection underneath so if I just add some more darks underneath that boat there then it becomes again where it sits more in the water feeling like it's sitting in the water versus kind of too high up so that looks much better doing those little bit of uh, darks under here and then now we're ready to um, maybe we'll work in the uh, hills here so I'm going to uh, just uh, brush, uh, do a little quick, um, I'll clean up the palette a little bit. I'm tending, tending to work on this side of the palette a lot. I have other areas of the palette we can work over here. So if you get rushed for time, and um, you can always just keep using all the different parts of the palette. I tend to use uh, certain parts of the palette a little more than others. So. Um, and then we're going to get some cadmium lemon yellow, sap green, and viridian. And let's get some uh, raw umber. And then here we can just have fun. We're going to do some hills. We'll have bushes over the top of these hills. Now I'm going to go get a more of a light, lighter green, which I'm just start working over here a little bit. That's also good because it adds another, you know, tonal value change and color change. Then we can do more raw umber, get some darks in. Then we can go in and start getting more into the earth tones, burnt umber. So we'll get some earth tones here, some burnt umber. Um, yellow ochre then we will use some French ultramarine blue and sap green and we'll just fire a nice happy tree over here too and a bush so let's not get too uh, uh, too detailed with these. Let's just kind of put them in. Let watercolor do what it's going to do. And then we can do another a bit of burnt umber and some more French ultramarine blue and some sap green. And we could do a few more. Just a couple dots of color. Then we can get into more some middle tones here. Let's do some 
quick uh, cleaning of the palate. Again, very important. Let's uh, be careful when we're working over the top of our. Better to clean the palate sometimes, you know, away from the over the top of the paper. I I do this so that you see what I'm doing when I'm painting. But usually when you're cleaning the palette and things like that, you'd want to move away from the, the top of the page, top of the painting. And uh, now we can go back in some French Ultramarine Blue, some Burnt Sienna. We're going to do some rocks. Okay, now these are more round shapes, so I'm going to do that. And we might need to... Rocks have sometimes those sharp lines, like that. Ang angu angular shapes, some dots for rocks. And uh, we'll do some more over here just to... some more sand kind of feel, which would be a yellow ochre. And then now at this point I would be careful to go to not to let this dry some of the dark rocks and things. Let those dry before you do your final washes around those. But that's pretty much um, the uh, final details here. Um, I'm leaving lots of white paper up over here on the left side, upper left side of the painting, but I am going to add some uh, I'm going to add some cerulean blue to the sky quickly. I'm not going to get too fussy with the sky here. Just some nice maybe I'll do a little bit of a interesting uh, try to blend that in and I might do some just a tiny bit of uh, cat orange for that uh, that warmer feeling at the base of the sky that we could do um, we could do once this dries so again uh, monitor monitor your your washes So if you think things need to dry, definitely do that. Let things dry before you start uh, in with another wash. So here I'm being careful to work around some things here. But if we can get some of that really just a very light bit of yellow ochre along the base of the sky skyline there, it will look much better. And of course, we said we would leave um, leave some. We would leave some white paper, but we could also And this works good, these angles, like coming into the painting like this, because we've, we've done that down here 
So in essence we're repeating the patterns that we're using below up on top of the painting and that looks really good. Then it gives the painting a um, harmonized look. So I'm just kind of repeating what I have below, up above here. And that works well, it looks good. And we have a finished painting here, not too much more. We're not going to go crazy with too much details here. Again, sometimes leaving things unfinished will look better than just overworking um, too much. And I, I could see a couple things I could maybe get a little more... I could get a little... Maybe here this is the windows on the boat. That looks a little better. And uh, a couple figures would look good too. Um, we could do some figures. Um, we could do a nice... Uh, Always this is um, pretty standard. A, f a figure or two. And uh, just and just a suggestion of a figure is fine, like um, for this painting because the boats are sort of set back in the painting quite a bit so we wouldn't see a whole lot of detail and then the same thing across maybe at the other side you know we can maybe do another we can do a couple figures here I hope we've had fun. We did our final washes here. We got in some nice uh, tonal values here, some mid-tones and lighter tones. A little bit of uh, yellow, lemon yellow for uh, warmth and bright sunlight along that white side of the boat. Um, we did some nice earth tones, some greens and browns up here. And um, definitely could have waited for some of this to dry before I did my um, bushes and trees, but Sometimes it's that little bit of um, uh, happenings that ha happen with watercolor can be okay. But I could have waited. I, I, w I should have waited till I did some of these bushes here, but that's not a big deal. This has a free look to it, the painting. It has a spon you know, spontane uh, spontane you know, spontaneity to it. So there's no worries here. With watercolor, you can let things just happen as they will. Um, see what, you know, it, it's just another learning lesson as we paint another painting, and we can figure out if we're going to want to use that technique again in another painting or if we're going to try to uh, keep away from maybe some of the things that happened on our painting. It's always a learning experience with watercolor. So let it, let your paintings always teach you something uh, so that you can learn um, how you want to keep uh, moving ahead in your paintings and certain things may happen that you don't like. Don't do them anymore. You figure out how to avoid them and then other things if you like the way they turn out some of the mysterious things about watercolor, then let them happen and, and have fun with them and, and you can use them in your creativity. So again, watercolor is creative, have fun, do lots of these, do, do five paintings just like this, it's the same thing. Uh, change the color of the boat, uh, make it a stormy sky instead of a blue sky maybe. Um, uh, you could also um, change around and maybe put some buildings across here 
uh, in the distance. So you can adjust things and uh, be as creative as you want. Have a great time and we'll see you on the next video.